A WWE star's injury is real and very serious. AEW are making a major change to some of their TV tapings, and a New Japan Pro Wrestling star has challenged Tony Khan at Forbidden Door. It's time for the news. Unfortunately, about half of this video, the first half, is going to be all injury news. There's a lot of injuries going around in wrestling at the moment. We're going to start on the WWE side of things. Um, there was a report yesterday from The Observer stating that Ivar's injury was a kayfabe thing. It yeah. was wasn't real and he's just taking some time off because he's working very hard at the moment. However, the man himself, Ivar, has taken to Twitter to clear things up, saying, there's been a lot of misinformation floating around about me. Let me clarify. Yes, I'm injured. Yes, it's very serious. No, I have not had surgery. Still trying to figure out all the options and what this means for my future. That being said, I want to thank everyone for the outpouring of love and support, not only after finding out I was injured, but throughout the last several months. I've heard you all. No matter what happens, I I owe it to everyone who ever believed in me to do everything I can do to get back in that ring under those lights and in front of the most amazing fans on the planet. See you as soon as I can. Uh, his also injured tag partner, Eric, responding to him. Uh, love you, Ivar. Neither of us were ever supposed to make it this far. You'll beat this one too, and the raid will return with a brand new bad. Viking strong. Hopefully he's all right. There's a, maybe a little bit of a clue as to what this is, and we don't want to speculate too much, but the Andrew Sports Medical Center tweeted out this week uh, a picture of one of their doctors, Andrew Cordova, and Ivar together with the caption, thank you, Ivar, for trusting in Dr. Andrew Cordova and his team to help you achieve. And then if you look at the hashtags here, there's like victory over injury, WWE, NXT, Viking Raiders, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the third hashtag in there is hashtag spine. So I don't think it's unfair to maybe you assume that this is a, a spinal injury of yeah. some sort could be incredibly serious. I mean, he's saying it himself yeah. is very, very serious. Obviously, it could carry a, a, a large time out of the ring, depending on exactly what the nature of the injury itself is in or around the spine, if it is indeed a spinal injury. But I, you know, I think it's one of those things we may find out more information uh, as and when uh, things start to, to develop uh, around the, the, the what's going on with him. But I, I, I think for now, we can't really speculate too far other than it may be spinal related. It just sucks doesn't it? The, the yeah. Viking Raiders, like, I think they're a brilliant tag team, all the way from, like, the Indies to NXT, oh, yeah. and then it's been a bit iffy, the, the first half of their main roster stuff especially, not all that. They embraced uh, but they're it, though. great. They, they ran with everything. Yeah, they, they did. They've they, they given it their they, all. You're they right. Did basketball segments, they did all sorts, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it, they, they, they've really stuck it out, and I think now is the time where we're really going to see Triple H get behind them again, because Triple H was obviously Hopefully. championing them in, in NXT, but I, I was sort of hoping that now, under the new regime, maybe we'll see them get elevated a bit more uh, and it's obviously not the, the sort of thing you want to hear when that's what you're hoping for. It was really optimistic fan. when they kept using Ivar when Eric was taken out injured. Yeah. So Eric's off TV, they kept using Ivar, they were putting him in fairly featured matches on TV mm. doing good stuff with him um, and yeah it's just, it's just really sad to hear so we send our very best to Ivar of the Viking Raiders. More injury news as I say, Ring of Honor Women's World Champion Athena reportedly hurt during Thursday's Ring of Honor TV taping. According to PW Insider, uh, Athena hurt her left leg during her match with Viva Fan. Uh, according to the report, there's a spot in the match, right, where Athena charged at her, uh, who ducked, pulled the middle rope down, she went through the ropes, landed on the floor, uh, and then she was limping when she came up, um, and it looked like Athena communicated to ringside personnel that she was hurt, they went to the finish. Um, staying in character, but did didn't put any weight on her leg um, as she left the ring and she was helped to the back. Uh, she's been checked out after the match, no confirmation of the severity of the injury uh, and how long she's going to be out of action or if indeed she's going to be out of action. Hopefully it's 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 not going to be long and it's not something too serious. We've seen quite a lot of uh, leg and, and ligament and, and sort of uh, tendon injuries going around uh, sort of before this most recent spate of injuries that we've been seeing. Uh, but it's got to be one of the hardest things is, is those sort of blind landings where you're going out of the ring and it, if you're sort of turning it all, like having to land right, it, there's so many windows of opportunity where it can just not go right. right? It's so easily yeah, done. It's so it? easily done. Nobody's it's done anything wrong. Misstep. Nobody's done anything wrong. It just sucks, but hopefully it's, it's something light. Hopefully it's something that, that's just rehabable. It doesn't require anything major and, and she can be back.
Yeah. Um, we send our best also to Athena. Um, and on that night, we send our best to Eddie <coughs> Kingston, who yeah. is also hurt uh, at the moment. He's confirmed to have suffered a tibular fact- fracture sorry, to his leg, according to PW Insider. Uh, this happened when he was taking that suplex through a table, breached across uh, the ring to the yeah. guardrail, uh, taking on Gabriel Kidd in New Japan. Uh, his leg slammed over the rail, uh, and he just he soldiered on. He finished the match, and then he did the planned post-match angle as well with the elites. Um, um, he, uh, he, well, the PW Insider have also been told, um, which this looks optimistic, he's hoping to return by All In in London this year, but that does depend on whether surgery is required. Hopefully with it being a fracture, because the initial report came out that it was a break, like a proper break, and I was like, oh God, he's going to be out for so long, and then he's going to have to rehab and get used to kind of working on it. Uh, but hopefully with it being a fracture, he's he was uh, on social media in a wheelchair, leaving the hospital, but... You smoking know, a cigar. Uh, smoking a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> or a blunt. But like, he... Uh, Oh, was it? Oh, was it? Oh, my God. I'm so pathetic, aren't I? But, I thought it was but, like... A, well, you, you, take a, you take a cigar that, skin and then you, you open it was It was fat, though. It could be cigar. I don't know. I'm just uh, insinuating. Okay, all right. Uh, but uh, it's one of those where you see when, when he goes over again, like he just grabs his leg when, he, when, they, hit the, yeah. when they hit the deck and it sucks. So uh, Eddie Kingston, obviously, heart and soul. So getting him back for, for Wembley's got to be imperative if it's possible. That crowd's going to go wild for him. Yeah, he's great, isn't it? It was a yeah. shame to see him pulled from the from the double or nothing match. Uh, yeah. Darby Allen, great replacement, oh, but Darby Allen's knackered as well. Exactly. Yeah, he's like it's not somebody he just you know he leaves a venue and gets hit by a bus, and it's like just, just somebody wrap him in bubble wrap, put him in a car, get him to the next. <laughs> The, the, mo- the most mental thing is he won't hold back. It'll no. still be Darby Allen no, doing all exactly. sorts of stuff. I he can't have, wait for he the can match. He can have like, uh, an arm hanging off and he'd still be you know, just going through the paces like nothing. Like Yeah, for sure. Uh, sticking with AEW now, uh, a major change coming up to some TV taping. So from July 20th to August 17th, AEW are going to be taping uh, both Collision and Ring of Honor in one venue. They're beginning a residency at the eSports Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The eSports Stadium, when you've got the AT&T there, 100,000 a night. Taylor right. Swift did well. it. AEW can. Uh, so it's a 2,500 seater arena. It's one of the smallest venues that they've run in a little while. They're promoting this series of events as AEW Path to All In Summer Series. Matt Wilson, <coughs> the exec director of the Arlington Sports Commission, told Dallas Morning News, this is a partnership and this is a deal where we felt like there was some great opportunity to showcase not only that building, but showcase Arlington too. Tony Khan commenting saying, there's always been a great affinity toward pro wrestling around Dallas and recently pro wrestling is red hot nationwide. The folks in Arlington have given us this amazing opportunity to bring this series and our top stars right there to Arlington and we hope to build this AEW Summer Series into something very special. Uh, The plan is to continue doing Dynamite on the road every Wednesday but yeah Collision and Ring of Honor. I'm interested to see how this goes because I think they're going to sell those out. I think they'll do two and a half thousand every week and I think the crowd will be super hot for them. I'd rather them run a smaller venue and pack it out. So this is it. I, I think that we've been waiting for a long time. The, 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 there's been reports and reports and reports. And of course, because of the tribalism, there's been picture after picture after picture of, um, you know, venues half full, people being moved around. Like it's stuff we've seen with WWE over the years before. It's nothing new. We've all seen that sort of stuff. But AEW were apparently tied into a lot of venue deals, um, mm-hmm. but looking to move into smaller venues and pack those out to, I guess, increase the atmosphere. So I think that this is a, a good first step into that direction while making it into something a bit more special where it's a residency where maybe people are going to come back for everyone. Maybe they'll do a package deal. Maybe they'll get more of that NXT sort of vibe where, hey, you get the same seat every time you come for the, the all these events or whatever. But I, I think this is a good first step down without kind of just immediately going and taking everything to smaller venues. I think seeing how this does, AEW should be able to comfortably move into like a four to 5,000 seat venue surely Mm -hmm. i'd say like on the weekly if that's you know going to prove to have a better atmosphere and build from there yeah that's it and they're not there long enough for the fans to sort of get spoiled we've seen it before like nxt at times uh tna certainly where they were running the same venue a lot of the time you get the same faces in who don't give you that energy they're not there for long enough for that to happen that burnout won't be there but AEW does have a bit of a habit of running the same places over and over and over and over and over again. So mm-hmm. they need to start moving into bigger spheres with this size venue. Uh, sorry, bigger sphere, like different areas with, with this size venue, I think. And that's going to be the key to 
allowing some of these markets to, to rest a bit because if you're running shows so close together in these markets, people aren't really going to keep coming out for them at the frequency maybe they once would. So I think this residency idea is great. And I think that maybe this is something we can build on moving into different markets. Maybe every time you move into a new state, you do six nights or, mm. or whatever, six weeks of tapings in one venue. I'm looking forward to seeing how it comes across on TV, yeah. how hot the crowd are. If you are going, if you're an Arlingtonian uh, and you are going, be as loud as you can. Yeah. I want to yeah. see a good crowd Plus, for this. It's good to feature esports venues as well. It's good that they're getting more and more representation uh, and more use out of things that aren't just esports because the, the venues are built up in the round quite often. So it, they it's, built for esports. I thought it was just like a Dunkin' Donuts thing. They just sponsor it. No, well, quite a lot of the there are quite a lot of esports purpose built esports oh, arenas right. out there where it'll be centralized or all sort of in the round. It will have an end stage set up if you wanted to put a band on or whatever, but it's kind of built mm. for that atmosphere for everybody to be looking central. So I think. The, I, I've not seen this one, but quite a lot of the ones I've seen, it's all been kind of... Oh, that's so interesting. It might be like a really nice visual as well if everybody's just kind of facing the centre. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we're going to finish off with the news that Tony Khan has been challenged by <laughs> Evil. Uh, he's looking to have a face-to-face -face with Tony Khan at Forbidden Door. Um, House of Torture, recently speaking with Tokyo Sports, uh, he said he was displeased that uh, Takeshita will challenge John Moxley in that AEW World Heavyweight Championship Eliminator match. Um, and he claimed to be the highest authority <laughs> in New Japan, suggested that Khan come face-to-face -face with him in the ring at the June. June 30th pay-per-view, he said, you're doing whatever you want and I'm not going to stand by and watch. Don't act like you're equal to me, the president of an organization that's not that big. My company and your company are not of the same caliber. You don't seem to know your place, so I'll give you a lesson. You can stand in front of me at Forbidden Door. Next time, you won't be wearing a corset. You and I are on different levels. <laughs> uh, obviously, he's not the president of New Japan. Uh, no, that's but Tanahashi, he, but he's, he, he's killing it with this. It's really fun. He's the human embodiment of evil. He is. He's, you know, he's... he's President he's Evil time. is President such evil. a good name. That's like a proper villain name, isn't it? <laughs> President Evil. Anyway, he's doing great stuff. It's all it's all marketing stuff. It's just PR We're stuff. seeing it's more sentiment like this, though, kind of bubbling up in New Japan, where it's like, who's AEW to come in here and do all this and run off with our belt? And, like, what are we getting out of this? And I think this sentiment, just build it and build it and build it. And then we can make Forbidden Door spicy. We can have it versus, right? We can make it actually mean something, not just be dream matches. Because I love dream matches uh -huh. but let's do something story-wise with it yeah let's get new japan I want and AEW running like no. an actual parallel thing i want aew to focus NWO, on aew man. nwo no they, need, they need to focus on their company we've complained for the longest time about like oh loads of ring of honor tv matches happening on dynamite focus on aew for me anyway oh yeah i think that but the i think when you're around forbidden door and there's this kind of sentiment you've got an aew uh star arguably like more of an AEW star than a New Japan star holding uh, the New Japan title. I think that there's there's a way you can spin this into something for New Japan mm. that's maybe a bit more westernized story-wise that audiences can kind of latch to because New Japan tends to be presented a bit more sparsely and sportingly. Anyway, I'm looking forward to Evil versus Tony Khan. We'll, yeah. see, we'll see what happens. I hope he just I don't, get, I don't oh, think anything's get his big scythe and just battery it's a good laugh though isn't yeah. it it's a good laugh thank you very very much cheers for watching uh, we have got a list going out tonight and then tomorrow uh, we have got uh, what is going to be perhaps our most de decisive divisive divisive video ever the 101 greatest pro wrestlers of all time nobody's going to be happy with it we're not happy no. with it in the office no we, because we, we everybody's all about it <laughs> exactly can't you, 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 can't, you can't win anyway fine out our rankings uh, it's like two and a half hours long that's premiering tomorrow at 6 p.m it's a brilliant video it's a br truly it's i'm just not... gonna get your back up quite yeah a lot. <laughs> it got my back up and they got say got everybody because we've all got opinions haven't we anyway take care of yourselves have a good weekend Tie see bye. you in a bit